Hello and welcome back to the channel. First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you who have liked and subscribed to the channel. And please keep in tune uh, with what's coming because I've got some awesome stuff on the way. I also would like to thank Donna and Mark for opening up Altrium Rifle and Pistol Club for me today to film this video. I've also got two rifles. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to Adam Kirk for the Griffin. I uh, purchased that off him and I purchased the Wolverine off Steve Ablett. So big thank you to Steve. And finally, I'd like to say thank you to James, who's Baggy... 73. 73. Thank you, Mark. Mark's helping me film. Baggy 1973. He's available on both Facebook and eBay and you'll see his work in regards to the laminate hamster and also the cocking lever he's done for the Wolverine. So the reason for me doing this video, as you can see today, I've got the Daystate Griffin and the Daystate Wolverine R is because of the recent announcement by Daystate uh, for their new rifles. So what I thought I would do today is just do a quick overview of my time with both of these rifles and do a little mini shootout um, let's start with the Griffin. Let's take a closer look at the Griffin. So one of the first things I'd like to say about this particular rifle is that this is the production model. As you can see, uh, the stock, the laminate stock is a lot darker than the limited edition model and you've got uh, the, the entire actions all silver compared to black. I preferred this version over the limited edition version because I love the stock. The stock is absolutely gorgeous as is the silver, uh, the, the, the silver barrel, the silver cylinder and the action. Absolutely adore it. Um, I mean, starting from the back of the rifle, we've got a adjustable butt pad. We've also got an adjustable cheek piece over here. We've got a thumb hole stock, which has essentially a, uh, in terms of the grip, we've got uh, an ambidextrous grip with a thumb up and thumb down position. If you, as we move forwards, we'll just focus on the stock a little bit more. We've got a hamster, which is attached over here, which is height adjustable with this lever over here. And again, moving forwards, there's a really, really nice stippling embedded over here, mid section, but noticeable there isn't any stippling at all on the handle, which I don't actually mind. I got used to it having used some of the other day state rifles uh, and you'll see on the Wolverine they're stippling on the grip over here and over here midsection on the stock. I didn't actually mind to be fair and I really love these cut out holes which are next to the, the, the air cylinder um, which give it a really really nice dynamic look. In terms of coming back and looking at the actual action itself this one in particular is a bolt action and this rifle is a 177, directly underneath the, the bolt, which again is really nice to use, really, really smooth, is the safety catch. Again, there's some really nice defined clicks when we use that. As we move forwards with the rifle, we've got the manometer, which tells you the air pressure. The cylinder over here is, bear with me, I think it's 177 uh, it's actually, no, sorry, it's a 144cc air cylinder and you probably get around, I don't know, um, about 100, 100 shots, maybe 100 to 120 shots uh, in 177. And over here, we've got the actual uh, barrel itself. And the barrel length is 17 inches. And at the end of it, we've got a special uh, Hug It designed moderator. Now, let's take a closer look at, oh, sorry, one more thing it's worth mentioning. The fill pressure on this uh, states just about 200 bar. And I've taken this just slightly below 200 bar. I'd like to take it now. Oh, I keep forgetting one final thing. I would like to talk about is this one has been mounted with an MTC Genesis 5 to 20 by 50. And there is a reason for me bringing this up because when I do the shootout, the Wolverine's got a slightly more powerful scope on it, but I, it doesn't negate the accuracy of this Griffin. This Griffin is absolutely gorgeous to use. And in terms of its accuracy, it's an, it's an absolute laser. 
Right, fast forward in terms of years. I think this Griffin was released in 2016. I think this was the Wolverine R was released in 2018 or 2019. Now, I don't know what to say about this rifle because I absolutely adore this as well. Um, I own, as you know from the channel, a Day State Wolverine and a Day State Red Wolf. And only these two, which are almost like going back in time slowly. I, you know, the first rifle I got was the Wolverine, sorry, was the, Re uh, the uh, Delta Wolf. I almost forgot then, the Delta Wolf. And then moving back, I got the Red Wolf. And then owning these two rifles, I I'm almost like going backwards in time in terms of owning Day State rifles when they were produced. Uh, but it doesn't negate the quality nor the accuracy involved. And I'm, I, I love rifles which are super, super accurate. And this, again, is, from my perspective, bang on. So taking a closer look at this particular rifle, again, we've got an adjustable butt pad over here. We've also got, as we move forwards, this one has been modded with uh, an extension to the butt with which has a sling attached to it. Now, as we move forwards, this one has a fixed stock with no adjustments to its cheek but it does have a thumb hole uh, section in, in this rear butt sec rear uh, stock section. And it is, again, got an ambidextrous grip with uh, a, thumb, a thumb down and a, a thumb up position. There's stippling, really nice stippling over here on the grip itself, as there is mid section on the rifle. As we move forward, there are cutout sections for both the moderate, uh, sorry, the manometer for the air pressure in the cylinder and the humor air regulator so it's showing a 50 bar set for the for the air for the regulator now the difference between the wolverine r and the griffin this one is actually side cocking in terms of its action so as we move down this side um we've got and again, I'll, I'll use this as an opportunity to talk about um, James's work. He's created this really nice laminate cocking lever, which matches the rifle, as he has done with this really, really nice hamster. And again, when you purchase the work off uh, James, uh, or bear with me a second, I'm just uh, remind myself, Baggy 1973. Um, he sends you some really nice instructions and he's really, really helpful in terms of providing you with additional instructions and correspondence to help you fit your, your hamster. As we move forwards with the action itself, we've got the actual, bear with me one second. Just, there we go. In terms of the barrel length on this, this is also 17 inches. This one has got a carbon fiber bottle, which I believe is four, uh, I think it's about 480 or, f yeah, 480 cc carbon fiber bottle. And over here, we've got a specific uh, Virac silencer. It's worth mentioning, both rifles aren't that heavy uh, when you use them and they've, they're really nice to shoulder. I mean, in terms of weight, the Wolverine R is roughly about 3.5, kg and the the griffin is roughly without a scope mind you uh is roughly about 4.3 kg and as i mentioned you know they're, they're they're not the heaviest rifle i mean if you pick up a, a all modded red wolf uh, not red wolf sorry uh delta wolf for example or for example i've also got um, some other rifles which are super super heavy they these these aren't heavy uh, in comparison. Now, what I'd like to do also, just to highlight the scope on this one, <laughs> this one's got a Hawk Sidewinder 10 to 50 by 60, um, which does make a, a hell of a lot of difference when you're shooting distance. And I do think there is slightly an unfair advantage with having this scope, but having said that, I'm not going to lie to you from having shot the Griffin the accuracy of this thing is bang on, so I'm not too worried in terms of the shootout today. So what I'd like to do is uh, basically shoot this rifle first, the Wolverine, at target, which is downrange, um, and we're roughly about 25 meters. I use the left-hand side target to zero both rifles, and the right-hand side target is essentially empty, and I'm gonna shoot two 
10 shot groups from each one. I'm going to use two targets on the left hand side of the right hand side target to shoot the Wolverine. Two five shot group targets and I'm going to do the same thing uh, on the remaining top row for the Griffin. Two five shot groups so you'll be able to see the comparison. So let's get to it. cocking on this rifle is absolutely gorgeous it's really really smooth and again this cocking lever just it's absolutely adorable in terms of its looks in terms of its feel and how it matches the rest of the rifle along with the hamster itself so I've got a preloaded magazine 10, 10 rounds here in 177 and I'll just flip the zoom the uh, lens cap and then away we go so as I said I did take the opportunity just before filming to zero these I might make some very may minor adjustments we'll see how this goes based on the first shots and then take it from there okay I think we're good, I think we delivered that. First shot is literally bang on the ball. I'm going to do four more in this. So there's five. Should see that group when we go down range later. Absolutely gorgeous. So that is 10 shots. Now, what I'm gonna do is just clear this down. So that rifle is clear, dry fire. And I'm gonna put this to one side and then we'll focus on 10 shots from the Griffin. So I'll just pop that down to one side and then take the Griffin. And then we'll do 10 using the Griffin. Now, as I mentioned, this is a bolt action, which is, again, from my perspective, super, super smooth. You know, you wrestle with some bolt actions. I don't know if you, you own a bolt action, I've used them. Some, some of them are quite stiff to use. This one's really, really smooth. So, just position this rifle a little bit so I can get some clearance on here. Now, I'll tell you now, from going from that scope to this scope, it's a big, big difference because of the, uh, the magnification on that other scope. You can tell there's, there's a huge difference, huge difference. Still, I'm gonna do my best to uh, just put this uh, rifle to its paces and uh, show you what, uh, what it can do. Bear with me one second, I'm just trying to... There we go. Okay. Again, bang on the ball.
Wow. <laughs> so he says, wow. When you, uh, well, look, uh, wow, that, that group that I've just shot there, the first five shot group, wow. Okay, there's 10 shots. We're just gonna clear this down. And dry fire. Right, I'll just put this rifle in a position where I know they're stable. That's stable. I'm just gonna go down range. So, you'll see in a minute why I was uh, chuckling to myself, because it's so gratifying when you get a five shot group, which is pellet on pellet. Let me show you what I shot. So, this is what I shot before, just to show you very quickly, uh, zeroing. So that was me zeroing the Griffin, and then this is me zeroing the uh, Wolverine, and I left the Wolverine on the bench, and here now, is the first five shot group from the Wolverine. There's my little finger. There's the next five shot group from the Wolverine. And that, <laughs> that was the five shot group from the, the, the Griffin. And then there was the next five shot group with that flyer, that flyer. Ah, uh, apart from that flyer, look at that. I'll just hold this a little bit still. Sorry, my hand was wobbling because I was super excited. I mean, I could see that through the five to 20 scope, but I mean, looking at it up close, I mean, wow. So yeah, I mean, looking at that on the whole, it's it's really, really, really evident that Daystate rifles, even going back in time to when they were released, bang on in terms of accuracy, and which is why I am really, really looking forward to what this new rifle is and the offering from Daystate. I wonder if it's going to be an evolution to the Delta Wolf. Let's wait and see. Anyway, first of all, I'd like to thank you all once again for liking and subscribing. Honestly, I wouldn't make these videos if you didn't keep liking and subscribing. They're really fun to make and I love basically talking to, to you all. Please keep in tune to the channel and uh, I've got some exciting stuff coming up, as I mentioned earlier at the very start. So, thank you very much once again. You take care, stay safe, and I'll see you all very soon. Thank you very much.